on the heels of the Great Reset is something called the Great Narrative. What's the Great Narrative? Right. So the Great Narrative is another uh, campaign similar to the Great Reset campaign that has been proposed by many of the same people, Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum, that's Davos, mm -hmm. the Davos people. They have also proposed this great narrative. And essentially the idea behind the great narrative is we need a new story, a new narrative, a new way of uh, thinking about the world to prepare the world for this transformation that is coming. The assumption is the transformation is coming. And so we need a way to make this appealing and mm. for us to understand it as human beings in this evolving story that's going on here. Um, and so what is that great narrative? It is, if you take the, uh, the, the core of the Great Reset, namely social credit scores, ESG, all of these tools and mechanisms for reshaping society, mm -hmm. and you couple that with emerging technologies that are already going to have a massive disruptive uh, force, be a, a disruptive force in our economies and societies, so like artificial intelligence, for example, and quantum computing is another example of that, cryptocurrencies, these things that are changing life mm -hmm. just because they're being invented. You tie those two things together, you have the ability to change everything overnight. So, or, or in a very short period of time. So one of the examples that I like to use that I think everyone can kind of relate to is if the left had a time machine, which is a scary thought, I know, and they could go back into time to say 1994 and rewrite the rules of the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Would they rewrite the rules of the internet? I think we can agree. Of course they would, right? Sure, yeah. And then what would those rules look like and why would they write them the way that they would and how would that work exactly? Uh, I think we, on the right, I don't think you have to convince anybody that that would definitely happen. They've been trying to stuff the, de the genie back into the bottle ever since it got out, right? Mm -hmm. But it's really hard because people are used to freedom on the internet. Mm -hmm. So now you're trying to do the opposite. It's too late for them and they know that. So what they want to do is not repeat that mistake again. They want to, in the next wave of uh, the fourth industrial revolution with all these new technologies, they want them right from the very beginning to be doing the things that they wish they could go back in time and design the internet to do. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening here. So you get, you get all kinds of crazy ESG embedded right from the very start in all of these emerging technologies like central bank digital currencies and like artificial intelligence and all of that. Yeah, and these tools can do a lot of work here. This is, you, you brought up an incredible example uh, this morning when you were on the radio show with, uh, with Glenn, we're talking about uh, what, what discrimination used to be. Um, can, you, can you walk people through this? I thought I'd never heard this talked about like this. And in a way it's, worse than what we used to think of as discrimination, <laughs> yeah. which you think couldn't possibly happen, but we might be there. Yeah, so many horrible things that have happened in the past, including widespread discrimination and to varying degrees racism and other things, have come from the people in power trying to figure out a shorthand way to blame a problem on a particular group of people who think a certain way or act a certain way or do something that they don't like. Exactly. Right? And so when the Nazis decided to discriminate against the Jews, it wasn't literally every single Jewish person, including little children, that were really the problem. Mm -hmm. But there was something, there was a problem there for them. And so they decided, you know what, let's just blame it on all the Jews. It's just easier that way to just point to that group and do that, right? Was, like if there was a, a Jewish person who might have agreed with some of their policies, yeah. it was they didn't take the time to navigate those waters. They just said, we'll blame all the Jews for everything. Obviously a horrible, horrible idea and a horrible, horrible policy. Right. But one that seems to me maybe be being updated. Yeah, exactly. And so in, in the new world that's emerging, and, this, and that would be true not just of discrimination, but just any kind of widespread government crackdowns or attacks on liberty or whatever, mm -hmm. it's often because they can't figure out who the real troublemakers are. So they, so they blame everybody. They blame right. large right. groups of people, right? Well, now they don't have to do that anymore because we have the technology to actually know almost everything about almost anyone. And so 
you don't have to discriminate against widespread groups of people. You can pick individuals out and say, you are the problem. You, the individual person who said this terrible thing on social media, who is clearly a Trump supporter, you know, they can now determine the difference between a person who really likes Donald Trump, a person who was just willing to vote for Donald Trump and a person who didn't like Trump and didn't vote for them. They, they used to just discriminate against everybody. Now right. they can pick it out. And they, and when you have that ability using technology to differentiate between people, to target individual people, and you can tie that to a score that makes it really easy to punish or reward people, which is what ESG is, and then you have the technology to sift through that and to do it on a wide scale, then you can make you can you can discriminate in a way that was never possible before and it can be based mostly not on external characteristics but on your thoughts on your ideas on your beliefs on the core of what it means to be a person yeah, what's stunning about it too is the is the scope right i mean the efficiency level of this technology and how widespread it is in all of our lives you get a situation where they can do this to an entire civilization and then make decisions. You know, this, this, the central bank digital currency is a great example of this. If that's programmable, if it's something that they can do and say, hey, you know what? Um, no, of course, you, 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 you people don't get to buy guns. You people don't get to buy ammunition. You people don't get to uh, go on the train. I mean, we're seeing this legitimately happen right off the bat through government policy in places like China with social credit scores. And that is going to roll into this next version of uh, artificial intelligence. And, and what does that world look like when it does? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, so much of this book is about how the next wave of authoritarianism is not going to be anywhere near as bloody as the last wave of authoritarianism. But that's not because they're nicer people. Right. <laughs> it's because they're, they, they don't have to be that. There are actual downsides to being a bloodthirsty authoritarian that's just killing people everywhere. It causes mm. a lot of problems. It's it not easy to kill that many people. And then when you do, you're demonized. You, it, it's really sure. easy to demonize someone like that, right? But when you can control people without throwing them in prison by just simply silencing them uh, from social media, silencing them from the public square, cutting them off from getting access to banking services, when you can control what they can spend money on and what they can't spend money on, uh, when you have artificial intelligence rigging the algorithm right from the very start to decide who the winners and losers are in society, you don't need these kinds of giant crackdowns, jackboot stormtroopers, you just need the right system in place. And they've, once they figured out that controlling the money, having social credit scores, and controlling technology, those three things together, give you everything they ever wanted without having to kill anybody, that's when all of this really ran loose. And as you pointed out earlier, I don't think people realized what was going on. They saw the world changing, and now we are understanding why, that's cha why that change is happening. But this book is primarily about how that's going to happen in the, f in the very near future and how it's going to get a whole lot worse than what we've seen so far. It's amazing. And we're just scratching the surface on the book. Uh, it's out today. Make sure to go get it. Uh, I want to talk to Justin a little bit later on this week as well, go uh, deeper into the book. There's so much that we haven't even, you know, didn't even begin to talk about. But Justin, thanks so much. I know you worked really hard on this. Congratulations on the big uh, release. Uh, the book is called Dark Future, Uncovering the Great Reset's Terrifying Next Phase. It's co-authored with our own Glenn Beck. Be sure to grab a copy or two today. Justin, thanks for coming on the program. Thanks.